What's going on YouTube? It's Master Aquatics and I'm bringing you guys another video. So the 20 gallon tank finally is depleted. There is no more baby angelfish in the 20 gallon tank. So they finally made the big move to their new destination which is the 75 gallon tank. They are moving on up. They are getting a bigger home and I thought it was about time to finally move the rest of the baby angel fish into the 75 gallon tank. I know previously I mentioned that I moved a portion of them but I did not move all of them. Now it's completely empty. I did leave a few stragglers in there. I could not get them out. I believe I left about three. They kept hiding underneath the sponge filter so they were really hard to get and I was eventually going to go back and get them later but for now I have these guys in the 75 gallon tank and I noticed that their water wasn't doing so good. After I had moved this crypt out of the 75 gallon tank and I moved it into the 125 gallon tank it made a really big mess in my 75 gallon tank so I knew that my baby angelfish were not going to like the dirty water and they weren't going to do too well in the bad quality water so I knew I had to do something although I was very afraid I did not want to do a water change for these guys because I did not want to suck any of the fry up by accident i really got to stop calling them fry because they're not technically fry anymore they are considered juvenile or pea-sized angelfish um, and also to help out with these guys i did listen to one of the comments i did put this sponge over the filter intake um, it's doing okay it's blocking uh entryway for angelfish to get sucked up in but at night when I turn the lights off and I turn the lights back on in the morning, sometimes I'll see a few dead ones on there. But like I mentioned earlier, I had to do a water change because the water was just way too filthy. Um, first, I used the bucket and airline tubing method uh, just in case if I did suck up any, um, they would go into the bucket. And this was, this was very tedious. I couldn't do this because this is a big tank and that bucket can only hold five gallons of water so if I really wanted to clean out the water I had to use the python which if I do suck up any fry through the python they will die instantly and I was very afraid of this so I used caution when I did this and I tried to stay away as far away as possible from these guys but it was really hard because angelfish are very curious fish and every time they saw this big plastic tubing in the water they wanted to get close to it and find out what the deal is they wanted to know what this thing is um, and it was very hard to keep them away but um, luckily I did not suck up any fry which I'm very thankful for because I don't know what I would do with myself if I killed one of my own so I'm glad I was just able to avoid that entirely but I did run into another issue um, the issue is these ghost shrimp they popped out of nowhere I did not know I had ghost shrimp in my 75 gallon tank and these ghost shrimp were big they weren't small like the ones that your pet or pet smart these were pretty sizable ghost shrimp and I was just really confused so I thought about it I thought about it long and hard and actually the first thing that I thought of is are these shrimp gonna be a danger to my angelfish and at first I was kind of skeptical and I was like there's no way a ghost shrimp will go after an angelfish even if it's small enough and I was wrong so let me just tell you guys where these guys came from so about six months ago I uploaded this video that you're looking at right now and I bought some ghost shrimp and I was going to attempt to feed ghost shrimp to my angelfish that were in the 75 gallon tank at the time I believe I had uh, a few koi's and I also had my silver platinums but they did not go for the ghost shrimp they were too big and they ended up being a part of the a community tank and I left them there and I never saw them after that and I just thought that they died because for like months and months and months even when I did my water changes I never saw my ghost shrimp and so I just thought they they either got eaten or they just died but I was wrong so whenever I put these baby angelfish in here they started coming out and they actually like came towards the front of the glass which they hardly ever do and I was just wondering I was like why why are they so active all of a sudden and then i found out yes they do eat angelfish and small fish and that's why they were active and they decided to come out now after putting food in their tank after they've been eating algae for so long um so these guys were a danger to my fish i don't know 
how many fish they must have eaten because the angel fish were in there about two nights so who knows how many you know died from them and this is just really stressful for me because i've lost so many angel fish and i think i'm about down to like a third of what i used to have and what i started out with and i've just lost so many along the way i don't know I, i'm kind of bummed out about it because i really wanted to get a lot of angel fish to grow out and for me to have in my 125 gallon tank but i guess that's not going to happen but at least i'll have like 20 or so which i guess is more than enough but who knows but this just blows my mind so anyways i got the ghost shrimp and i ended up putting them in the 20 gallon tank and those stragglers that i left in there they ended up getting to them before i could get them out unfortunately i just have them in the 20 gallon tank for for now the gross thing about it is you can actually see the parts that the ghost shrimp has already eaten. If you look closely beneath its eyeball, I believe the orange stuff that you see there, it's not its organs, but it's actually body parts of the fish that it's eating itself. And I know some people might not want to see this, but I think I should inform people that you know, ghost shrimp, they are capable of eating very small fish. I don't know if they can eat neon tetras or anything like that, um, but... If they're the size of baby angelfish, like pea size, they'll definitely go after your angelfish. So that's why I my rule of thumb is I never mix uh, crayfish or any really big shrimps with any other fish that are small enough to be eaten by these guys. Um, I used to have a crawfish back in the day that I bought from Walmart, and he would go after my goldfish and all my other fish, and I learned my lesson there. Um, but these guys they've grown so big like when i got them they were really small um i don't even think cheddar bob or my silver angelfish uh f with my 29 gallon tank can eat these guys these guys are just massive these guys are on steroids i don't even know how big these guys can get um hopefully they don't grow any bigger i don't even know what i'm supposed to feed these guys i don't even know if i want to keep them i'm not sure what to do with these two ghost shrimp um i could feed them to uh cheddar bob and the other angelfish in a 125 gallon tank of course i would have to you know sorry to say but i would have to cut them up into pieces to do that um and i'm just not too comfortable with doing that i'm not comfortable with you know, I've done it before. I did it in a previous video where I actually cut up ghost shrimp and fed them the cheddar bob, but I didn't really like doing that, so I don't think I can do that again. But anyway, so my fry, they're doing good. Like, they're doing really good. I'm just, I'm so impatient. I forgot how this whole process, it takes so long. I, the, the growing stage, um, you know, you get super excited because you see the little fins develop on these guys, and then you end up waiting months and you're just like when are they going to be big enough to be put with other decent sized fish and when are they going to be sellable um when i do sell these guys i'm not making it seem like you know i know i'm probably not going to make too much profit off of these guys but if i play my cards right i might make enough to pay for the hobby itself which is what i'm aiming for uh, this is not something that you can get rich off of unless you do it on a mass scale. So I don't want to give it. I don't want to give anybody that impression. Um, and hopefully one day, you know, like I said, they can get big enough to be with Cheddar Bob and all the other crew that hangs out in a 125 gallon tank because they are living the life right now. They have uh, the best tanks out of everybody. It's planted. It has good substrate. It's it's a wonderful tank and. It, it really blows my mind, too, how they started out like this as baby uh, fry, and now they're big, and they're growing. They're just they're taking forever, and I'm just ready to get these guys moving. But anyways, it's near the end of the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I did do a live stream uh, yesterday uh, at the time of this recording, so if you guys haven't seen that, make sure to check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. I'll also leave it down in the comment section. Let me know what you guys want to see next. And also give me some feedback on this video. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me if you've ever had ghost shrimp and if you've grown them to adulthood. Tell me how you've done that. What did you feed them? Give me some tips. Give me some information. Anything will help. Also, please share this on social media. 
don't forget to do that. It'll help me out a lot. If you like these videos, continue to support me. My name is Master Aquatics, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye. Thank you, young God, for the blessing, ayy. Hey.